Hi guys, welcome to the PHP. I'm Booker. That's Perez. What's oh doing? My, oh my God. First of all, I was five minutes late. I apologize, but that's because I was dealing with some Sean Mendes breaking news, which we will talk about later in the show. We're also going to talk about Candace. <laughs> This is just the, it's the funniest thing to me. Candace Cameron Bure from Full House versus Jojo Siwa. Really? Yes. Britney Spears versus her mom. Honey Boo Boo sadness. Uh, Kylie Jenner ridiculousness. More ridiculousness with Dave Chappelle. And lots of exciting news to share. But first, for our listeners... You have a baseball cap on. You never wear a baseball cap. And I have before, haven't I? Like almost never. And secondly, huh. you are like freshly shaven and you never shave. I shaved last week for the show. You did? No. Yeah. 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 You look like you're 39. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll take that shit. <laughs> wow. You look, you look, you're looking really good. Did you lose some weight too? No. No? <laughs> All I right. wish. <laughs> I think it's just the uh, the beard takes some grayness away, probably. I don't know, but thank you. Well, speaking of younger Booker, I met up with Debbie Gibson Deb, in how's Las she? Vegas, and I had in my mind that information that you shared with me that you hung out with her and you weren't sure if it was a date or not. Yes. So I brought that up to her. And... <laughs> Not a date. Date. She doesn't remember either. Yes. She's not sure if it was a date or not, <laughs> but she sends her regards. She remembers you. Yeah. So that it, it was memorable, but she just didn't remember if it was a date or not. Yeah. Uh, but that was fun. It was fun hanging out with her. And um, I hung out with Robin Anton as well from the Pussycat Dolls. Killer. Uh, we went out to Lava. It was a good night. Uh, I'm also really happy and excited because this Monday, August 1st, on my interview only show right here, the same feed for everybody listening. Uh -huh. I think it's a big get. Um, Shane Dawson. He is a very popular YouTuber, influencer, and giving his first interview in two years. He was, quote, canceled in 2020. Oh. And he's speaking out for the first time since being canceled in 2020. So we have a very lengthy, honest, and I think really awesome chat. So be able to look out for that this huh. Monday. Sounds interesting. All right. And I'm just, I'm having a great time in Vegas, but I'm also going crazy because the house that we originally got was bigger than this one. And then it canceled on us like a, a few days before I just need my own space. I'm like going insane. Really? I'm 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 going like every everybody's on my nerves. My kids, my dog, my mom. So um, <laughs> how much longer are you in Vegas for? Because I did want to pop over. I'm here until August 24th. So okay. I'm here still for a bit longer. Okay. Let I can't do it this come. weekend, but yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks I'll come out because I do want to. I do want to hit Vegas. I haven't been in a minute and I'd love to see you over there. Maybe we could go to dinner and do something yeah. fun. Uh, have you been? Uh, all good. Um, nothing new to report. Did I tell you we adopted the second dog? We did. Oh, no, you yeah. didn't tell me that. We did. We um, One of the dogs we were fostering, we were going to get a second dog and the one dog passed away. And mm, so we'd been yeah. looking for another one. And the honey badger is what the... This dog is, and we named her. We just call her Badge, but she uh, she's so sweet. She's a big uh, big girl, and she's lovely and fun. So that's been a that's been fun. Is she uh, a puppy? She is about five months, so puppy ish. Oh, yes, that's still but a puppy. she's so smart. Yeah, she, she needs gets to up be every trained morning. and everything. She's got it already. She's already got sit and down, and she goes to the potty. She goes to the door to go outside. So. Um, she's right in pocket around here. So it's nice. It's nice having another dog running around and, uh, uh, yeah, it's been good times. Well, we got to find a dog food sponsor that will no doubt. sponsor the podcast. Dog I have food a dog. Is expensive. <laughs> I know I have a dog is my God, my dog. Actually, I'm looking at it now. He, he, oh my God. You, you would not believe it. He's got something for hip and joint. He's got something for being a senior dog. Yeah. He's got another one for his heart. 
like literally a, a mountain of stuff for my dog, yeah. but he's 15 years old and healthy. That's a good run. That's healthy. a good run. He's healthy. We've uh, we've got pet insurance for our uh, dogs. Oh, I don't know if you too. have that. Yeah. You have that? Yeah. I mean, thankfully, my dog's healthy. My sister has had to use her pet insurance. Her poor dog has had hip issues, mm. cancer. Aww like craziness. Uh, hmm. And if you listening right now have any gut issues, then let me tell you about Belly Welly. Booker's girlfriend loves Belly Welly. She swears by that stuff. She loves it. She's been ordering it online on her own. I wish they'd send me more. I'm tired of paying for it. I but she really, she got the, she, they sucked her in with the free sample here and she orders it online. She thinks it's a great snack and it's, it tastes it's, great it and tastes it's good for you. And it's good for you. Exactly. It's low FODMAP, low FODMAP. Uh, mm -hmm. If you've got gut symptoms like bloating, constipation, then these uh, bars, mm -hmm. brownies, goodies, the, the chewy treats are so healthy for you. Healthier than definitely something else you could take. Um, and if you order right now at bellywelly.com, you can try these out. They're three grams of fiber, gluten-free, vegan. They've got a bunch of probiotics in them and they come in great flavors. Go to bellywelly.com and use code Perez30 to get a 30% discount. That's B-E-L-L-I-W-E-L-L-I.com and use code Perez30. So as I said, I was a few minutes late because just before the start, have you heard this about Sean Mendes yet? Kellen said something a minute ago. Ah, she said, it. no, she just mentioned his name and she said, what's going on with him? And I said, I don't know. I, anxiety. And I didn't know there was a story to follow. So please tell me. OK, so moments before we were set to record Sean Mendes, whom a few weeks ago had announced that he was taking some time off from his tour for mental health issues, he just announced that he is going to cancel his entire tour hmm. at the advice of health professionals that he's working with. I get it. I respect it. The thing that rubbed me the wrong way in the statement that he released was let me pull it up so I can quote him verbatim. Okay. I've seen pictures of him running around LA without a shirt on and going to the gym every day. So he's here. Yeah. Good. Good for him. This part of his statement, just. It irked me. That's a good word. Irked. <laughs> it rubbed me the wrong way. He said, quote, I have to put my health as my first priority. This doesn't mean I won't be making new music and I can't wait to see you on tour in the future. I also recently randomly shared a Shawn Mendes sighting. A friend of mine saw him. He went to the Hollywood Bowl to go see the uh, Paris Opera Ballet. Uh, you, you mentioned you see photos of him hitting up the gym, which is great. Doing all, He's out and about and he's social. The fact that he mentioned making new music, my brain went two places. First, you should not have mentioned that, I think. It's disrespectful. Uh, you're well enough to make new music, get in the studio. That takes effort and this and that and the other, but you can't go on tour and honor your obligations. Mm -hmm. And two, I am even more certain than I was before that this is all about poor ticket sales. Yeah, I was going to ask that question because I buy that a thousand percent. But, but I, I, I want to hear your opinion. Let's say poor ticket sales were 50% capacity. Mm -hmm. Is it that bad of a look to perform to just a 50% full arena? Maybe it's you're losing too much money. And they need to scale this thing down, cancel those dates, put him in an uh, appropriate size room, uh, that of, a, I don't know, maybe a hair salon, something very small <laughs> um, somewhere, <laughs> and, and reset. 
because it, it's, it's got to be money. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I always absolutely. think it comes down to money. Absolutely. So, yeah. I, ju I, I just, they could have figured it all out instead of this announcement. They could have just said, you know, we're going to go in a different direction with the tour. We're going to do smaller, intimate venues. Nobody does that. Nobody says, hey, we were wrong. We shot too big. It looks bad. But this looks bad, too. Yeah. Because we can read the room. I think anybody can. I think his career is going in the wrong direction. And I think his music needs to change. And he needs a sort of reboot. He needs to, like, I knew re I reimagine something. Yeah. I was shocked when the tour was initially announced and he was doing two nights at the arena in Los Angeles, crypto.com. Really? Yeah. Two that nights. That surprises I'm, me yeah, big I'm time. Like, yeah. One, one actually surprises me big time. Yeah. He was doing, he had two scheduled. So this all makes sense. And let's be, let's be adult. It, it's probably poor ticket sales. It's, yeah. And you'll recall, you and I, we went to uh, Camila Cabello's show at the Hollywood yeah. Palladium. Yeah. And remember how great that was because- it was awesome. Scaled down, more but intimate. But still a good show. It felt a like great a big show. production. Packed. People cared. It was the right size. He needs to do the exact same thing as his ex-girlfriend and move it down a notch and make it more well, intimate, drive no, up the no, man. No, 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 no. But his ex-girlfriend also announced an arena tour that then was aborted. I don't think you remember that. <laughs> well, it, it looks like he's doing the exact same playbook. At that. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, I wish you well, Sean. I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I'm a fan of transparency though. Like, but the mental health card, it's it, it, it's almost it's a like, very playable card in 2022. Yeah, it's almost like safe. It's a safe bet. You know, you can't really be criticized for that. Yeah, when you watch say us. that as the excuse. <laughs> watch us. <laughs> All right. Moving on. One of my favorite stories of the last few days on Sunday, Jojo Siwa made a video that she shared on social media. It was this trend where people flip their phone really quickly and have photos of folks and they um, answer different questions like celebrity you have a crush on, um, funniest person. I don't remember all of the things, but one of them, the one that, that caught people's attention the most is rudest celebrity I've ever met. And People's pause button was on point because they were able to stop the video and see who Jojo Siwa was talking about. And it was Candace Cameron Bure of Full House and Fuller House, major God Squad member, mm -hmm. and somebody that I've met more than once. I've never gotten any, any bad vibes from her. In fact, I interviewed her for my website. So she's accepting and more than tolerant. I don't think she would have done an interview with a gay dude if she really had problems with gay dudes, I think. Mm -hmm. Her brother, Kirk Cameron, that's a different story. They're mm -hmm. different people. So yesterday, Candace actually, well, she was for a day trying to track down JoJo, wanted to speak to her. She was finally able to speak to JoJo and got to the bottom of it all. And it makes sense to me. JoJo, I think is 19 years old now, around that, 19 or 18 even. She's still very young. But when she was 11 years old, Jojo Siwa went to the Fuller House premiere, was on the red carpet, because remember, she used to be on that Dance Moms show. So she's been around and working for a long time. Mm -hmm. She asked Candace Cameron for a photo, and Candace snubbed her. And it broke 11-year-old Jojo Siwa's heart. <laughs> so that's why Candace Cameron is the rudest celebrity that she's ever met. Hmm. But what's interesting is Candace made a video explaining all of this. And then she said, the takeaway, this is the takeaway. The takeaway is it doesn't matter how big or small your following is, a video that you make can really affect people. So she ended things with Jojo was in the wrong, but 
I don't think that's the case. Jojo shared an honest thought from a real experience and she wasn't even mean about it. She didn't say Candace Cameron's an awful person or anything like that. She, she was lightheartedly sharing an experience that she had with a celebrity that was less than ideal. A lot to do about nothing. You know, Candace Cameron probably does not remember this interaction or moment. She didn't. She didn't. And she's, yeah, and at work and she's yeah, on a carpet. Exactly. And that exactly. is a weird place to ask for a video too. And you're photo, moving yeah. along and there's, yeah, there's no, so many things happening. I see both sides yeah. I, and I like both. So I don't yeah. think either of them are in the wrong, Yeah. but that, that caught people's imagination. And that definitely was a, a big story. <laughs> My question to you, who's the rudest celebrity you've ever dealt Ashton with? Ashton Kutcher, total oh, douchebag. Right. Remember you've I shared, can't, you've shared. yeah. Awful human being. Oh my God. I saw the real Ashton Kutcher and he's a terrible person. Horrible. And I have friends that are, that swear that he's the nicest guy. And maybe I did catch him on a bad day or maybe what I did agitated him by, you know, not being prepared for his movie that I should know about that. I went in, you know, with all the information, I, I haven't seen your movie. I'm here at Sundance to interview the people that have movies at Sundance and his was not a Sundance movie, but he brought Mm. it to Sundance and expected me to have seen it. And I'm (laughs) thinking, I'm sorry. I thought they told you coming in and I, and I wasn't a dick about it. I was very like, you're the celebrity. I'm I'm really sorry. And for him to like, tell me to take my job seriously. Oh oh, yes. And and behave like a professional Ashton Kutcher can go fuck himself. Oh, wow. That's I, it, rude. I, Just I the rudest interaction it. I've ever had Let with the celebrity. I find that interview right now. I have to. I, I don't think you could find it because I don't think they aired the they interview. It, the archives have got to be somewhere in E.T.'s locker. But Chris Booker, um, Ashton Kutcher. No, they didn't I doubt it'll it. be there. Got to remember, this was pre-internet, too, where they didn't throw everything up on the internet. They should have. Oh, well. Yeah, it would have been a great moment, him ripping out his, uh, you know, his ripping off his microphone and stomping away. like the. Oh, yes. Pure full-on diva diva mode. Totally. What a dick. (laughs) Well, I actually have a, a, a new person that I will, that's my latest on my rude celebrity list. Should I, uh, let me say what happened. Yesterday, I was interviewing Shane Dawson that comes out on Monday. And I was also supposed to interview somebody else. And they canceled literally moments before the interview. That sucks. Should I put them on blast and say who it was? It could, you know, there's health concerns in the world. There's a lot of thing going on, going on. All right. You know, so unless I you then. know the reason, unless you saw them gallivanting up and down Pico 20 minutes later. I don't know the reason. Robertson, but, I mean. I don't know the reason, but canceling moments before you're supposed to do an interview. Yeah, mm. that sucks, but Fuck it, it I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say who, but you'll be, you'll be able to figure it out. Some reality TV person. That isn't it often the case that some of these like reality TV people they're very are, busy people, Perez. They're the rudest, or just they think so highly. Well, of they're themselves. the least professional because they don't get it. They don't understand how important it is to be professional, to be the Tom Cruise of uh of everything. That's to a be, professional. To be professional, to be punctual, that's an important part of it. And if you're gonna 100%. cancel, then cancel with notice, you know. Mm. Anyways, let's keep it moving. I I don't, I don't, I, maybe it's because it's summer and people have more time. Maybe work isn't as busy for folks. I don't get it, but the latest Britney Spears drama with her family seems to be getting a lot of traction and I'm so bored of it personally. And this is my job. It's like, how many times are we going to care or pay attention and make a big deal about her calling out her family. You can stop. I have, I couldn't care less. I've said it a million times and it's not with me. It's not like this apathy has has set over me with every sort of story. Her record is the same song over and over. And it's not a very good song. 
she the the latest drama is she called out her mother and then the mother lynn spears clapped back by sharing some receipts she shared some screenshots of uh instant messages you know text text listen i will say it like this i support Brittany in doing whatever she wants whatever she thinks will make her heal and feel better i just don't understand and maybe i don't have to understand it's not my life or my healing but i don't understand why doing the same thing over and over and over again is helping What is helping, I think, and what I am excited about with regards to Britney Spears is she is slowly dipping her toe back into the professional world. Mm -hmm. And according to multiple reports, she got back in the studio recently. Did you hear this? With Elton John or to yeah. do something? I doubt she was she, with Elton John, well, but she probably you know, laid I down some say, vocals for someone to she, remix. I didn't say she was with Elton, but I said she got in the studio recently. Yeah, I did say and, that you did. And um, they're going to do the, the, the Dua Lipa treatment where she did a mashup of that old school Elton song and another Elton song. And it became a hit, that Cold Heart song. Mm -hmm. They're apparently reworking Tiny Dancer. And Ugh, don't ruin the classic. It might not be ruined. I mean, it's going to suck. Let's that Dua come Lipa on. One was, it was a big hit. It was not good, though. It could have I been a big it. hit. Ugh. You didn't love it? I loved it. Elton John's music is perfect. And this dick it around with it. Like Tiny Dancer, such a beautiful, perfect song. When I hear people screw with it, I'm just like, ugh. I'm already, I'm already puking over it. It's terrible. Yeah. I haven't even heard it. It's terrible. Well, I personally think it's smart and strategic because I think it could be an, a quote easy hit for her, and and think Brittany would an benefit. easy look for sure. People will I'll, look. I'll check it out. I'm, I hate it. I haven't even heard it. And I hate it. But how I'll can check you it hate out. it if you haven't even heard it? What because if it's you know why? Uh, Tiny Dancer is just it's the I most know, but perfect it might song be great. ever. No, it, might be it won't amazing. be. No, it won't be. It'll be someone in the studio go eh, 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 over. A great song. That's what it's going to be. Well, I am excited to hear it. And Good I wish you. Brittany well. Finally, after much waiting, Adele has announced her rescheduled Las Vegas dates, which I think I may have been wrong. I think I might have said on this podcast that it wasn't going to happen. And it's happening. Um, and not only is it happening, but it's it's happening in the original venue that it was supposed to oh, at the Coliseum. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, there were some rumors that she might have she might be moving the show to another venue, and she was just that unhappy. But it's going to be at the Coliseum, beginning in the fall and going through March. And they even added some extra dates. I think four. No, yeah, four more weeks, so eight more shows. Hmm. Uh, so that might give her fans even more of an opportunity to see her in Vegas if you really want to go see Adele. And there's no way I'm going to get any tickets now. <laughs> what did I, you do? Remember, you I didn't emailed do her wrong. manager and, and oh, the manager yes. ghosted me. And I talked yeah. about how the manager ghosted me on the show. Way to remind everybody, including the management of that. They probably had forgotten. Just another crazy thing you've well, done. I definitely Whatever. don't think I can email the manager again asking for tickets i wouldn't do that yeah you know what you should do it just fuck it do it no i'm not gonna do <laughs> I that i want to see the response if you even get one i'm not gonna do that i'm not dumb okay but think about it your last thing may have just gotten buried in the middle of everything that was happening it may not have even been read that's true maybe i'll i'll see if i can get tickets through vegas people <laughs> right Look, if, embarrassment doesn't seem to be a gear that you give a shit about. So why not? Fuck it. Just no, send no. them an email. <laughs> no, no, you're listen, you're right, but you, you missed one important factor. Ego. I have oh. a ginormous ego. Okay. So 
I don't mind being embarrassed, but I don't want to make a fool of myself or I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't, I don't know. It's like an ego <laughs> that thing. That ship has sailed, buddy. <laughs> it's an ego thing. It's not, All right. I don't, I, don't, it's, I it's, got you. It's I an ego you. thing. All and right. more music related <laughs> news. People just, I don't handle your your drinks and your drugs if you can't handle your drinks and your drugs you should not be drinking and drugging out in public mm -hmm. kid cuddy was at that Roland loud festival in miami a few days ago over the weekend and people were throwing shit at him bottles yeah plastic bottles and that's a safety hazard and just rude as well and no artist signs up for that. No artist deserves that. And he was filling in for Kanye. That should be mentioned. He wasn't even on the original lineup. Right. So I think people a lot are of saying people, that yeah, may have people were upset. upset that it wasn't Kanye and they were taking it out on Kid Cudi, which is unprofessional. But I guess my question, I bring it back to you really quickly. Do you think it was unprofessional of him to leave or, you so know? So he left. I didn't get to that part. So people would not stop throwing shit. At and he Kid warned Cudi. them. And he warned them and then he didn't even storm off stage. Mm, he calmly walked off stage. Mm -hmm. I do not think that was unprofessional of him at all. I think the, the organizers didn't do a good enough job. Actually, you, I don't know. I've never been actually to a festival. So I don't oh. know. Like in Coachella, I would imagine it's in April, right? And it still could get hot then, right? Yeah, so people sure. need to hydrate. So you can't really take away people. Oh, you can't water. take away their bottles. No, look, yeah. I've just been to festivals and I just think that's sort of, and it's mostly rock show festivals that I've been at. So I've seen like things just being chucked at the stage just for shits and giggles. I don't know. I'm sort well, of the I show think, must kind of go on guy, but I, I also get his side of it too. That you know, if he no, but if they're if water bottles, thing, if they're water bottle water bottles filled with water, that could hurt. That right. could hurt. Yeah, I think what a takeaway from this is festivals need to have a plan B. If you have a really rowdy crowd you need to be able to put up glass or something that will protect the artist like <laughs> a like netting, a shield like at a, no like a or netting, a netting like a, yes. at, a, at a baseball game that's where a that like down idea. the first and third base lines like that's sorry we have to put the net up because you people are assholes that's it's brilliant. called the asshole net it just comes up when people start behaving like an asshole well what's great about the net is you know people could still really see well through the net mm -hmm. and also even a camera outside of the net that's filming for the big screens could get it yeah, you can and still it's see fine it. yeah that's a great idea i like it all right not a great idea though i have so much empathy and compassion for this young woman because she was raised in dysfunction. Honey Boo Boo is a reality TV all-star. She's been doing reality television her whole life, basically, well over a decade. She's now 17 years old. Her mother, I, I, I almost wouldn't even call it that because her mother has basically abandoned her to do drugs and have sex with and be on the road with people. And her older sister has become a maternal figure and has been raising her. At 17 years old, she announced that she is going to have weight loss surgery. Two things. One, I would think... Uh, doctor would only perform weight loss surgery on a 17 year old if it was a critical situation if it was life yeah. or death i don't know if it's life or death with honey boo boo i don't think so especially because two she revealed in a new interview with entertainment tonight that the reason she's getting weight loss surgery is because she doesn't want to exercise or eat healthy. She literally said, quote, hmm. I know for a fact I could get in the gym and I know for a fact I could diet and I know for a fact I can do this to lose my weight. I've tried. I will say I've tried, 
But the one thing with me is I have no motivation. I have no motivation to just keep going to the gym every day. I have no motivation to keep eating healthy because like, I'm going to eat what I think is good. I just think I don't have motivation. And I feel like the surgery would be like probably the, the easiest way to just like lose it fast. Mm -hmm. What kind of surgery are we talking about here? Is this like when they put the band in or something like that? There's different kinds of weight loss surgery. I don't know the exact one that she's getting. But if you have that, you still have to control your eating, no? Yes, that's okay. the thing that I guess she does not understand. Right, that does, she, that doesn't make you just lose weight. You just, won't you just throw up everything? If once you eat your, too much, yeah. yeah. If you want your stomach, because they just make your stomach smaller, right? Like they just, yeah. they suck it down. And once it gets filled up, it's coming back up. However. That sounds awful. However, eventually, I don't know how or why, but and maybe some of our listeners can call us at 800-721-1185. Maybe some of them have had different kinds of weight loss surgery. I personally know several, many, a lot of people that have had weight loss surgery and they end up gaining the weight back. Hmm. I don't know how that happens. If, if, if it becomes less effective over time, or I guess if people really want, they can find a way to gain the weight back, even if yeah. they cut part of your stomach out or squeeze it or whatever it is they do. Yeah. I listen, I'm looking really healthy these days. I'm working hard at it. I've been where Honey Boo Boo was at. I've lost 70 plus pounds. I'm a fan and an advocate of doing it the natural way. Yeah, but it's I'm, hard to tell a 17 year old that. Unless, and listen, there are some people with actual medical conditions sure, sure. that really cannot lose weight. And I get that. But if you're able to lose weight or be healthier through a healthy eating and being physically active, then that's yeah. the best way to do it. I would think you would try that first and exhaust every option of that before cutting your body open and grabbing an internal organ and subjecting it to any sort of surgery. That just sounds scary to me, but you know, I don't have weight issues, so I don't know. I, I, I hope it works out. Okay. I hope so too. All right. In more wacky news, I am, you see, one of the things I love about myself <laughs> is There's a long I, list. There is a long list. One of the things I love about myself is I'm objective. I can, I can be like, even if I don't like somebody, if I see something bad happening to them or stupid happening to them, I can say, well, I don't like that person, but whatever that thing was, that was stupid. They, they didn't deserve that. Dave Chappelle, whom I'm not really a fan of. In fact, I don't even, I don't dislike him. I just don't like, I'm not a fan. I don't like Dave Chappelle. Right. Um, he was booked to perform at this venue in Minneapolis. Not just any venue, First yeah, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. A very iconic venue there. A small venue, which is a, a, exciting, right? Getting to see him perform in sure. a club Prince setting. Prince played there. Purple Rain was filmed there. It was uh, very, I'm sure, meant a lot to him. His relationship with Prince uh, uh, was well documented. So, yeah. So, you know, that was supposed to happen. And then the day of the show shortly before the, the club canceled because they heard their community and the backlash that, that booking got. Are they going to now then start vetting every single performer? Like if you've been <laughs> arrested for domestic violence, you can't perform at the, the, the First Avenue Club. If you've been arrested for for stealing from poor people, scamming like Jen Shaw from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. You can't perform yeah. there. Are they going to, if you've been arrested for rape or molestation or whatever it is, like, are they going to start doing that for every person? Like, I just think you're a fucking music venue. Like if people have a problem with it, don't go see Dave Chappelle. Thank you. I agree with you. It's performance art. I, I still don't understand what people's hang up is. Watch. There's a brand new special now, Dave Chappelle, oh, there is? where he talks about being canceled. He's uh, it's a really fascinating. You should really like watch brand it. Just new? Did it really brand like, new? It, it just came out? out on Netflix two weeks ago. Oh, um, I missed that memo. Well, he went to a performance school, right? And 
he goes on stage at this school and they want to name the school after him. So he goes to this school and it's an award ceremony, but they taped it as a stand-up special. He spoke on the cancellation. He spoke on just everything that's going on in the world and how context is dead. And uh, it's just very, very good. It's so well thought out. It's bordering on genius. It's so good. It's, wow. it's Carlin. Oh, wow. it's Carlin esque. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's a perfect response to a very great, comic special. Anyhow, you should just watch it because he really breaks down everything that happens and what's going on with our culture and society. It's, it is really a great watch. So if you guys want to, it's short too. I want to say it's definitely under an hour. It's a very quick watch, but um, it's great. It's really great. Well, that's really interesting to me. You know, I think earlier this year, he also released another stand-up special for Netflix. So despite he has a deal with them. I think no, he I had get like that, a but I'm saying six show deal. Despite, you know, outrage or upset from their employees and the public, Netflix sees value in in Dave Chappelle and they they think he makes them money because they could have get a they could have dropped him, right? They could have gotten out of that deal, but they've decided no. I don't is- think so. I think you know, when you sign comedians, you sign up for whatever they're going no, to say. It's That's- all about the no, what I'm saying is. If so long as they pay him, they would have paid him out of his deal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't see Netflix doing that. They no, pretty much not. stand behind they, their comments. No, that's what I'm saying. They, you know, the, Netflix sees value in Dave Chappelle and, and, and two shows. The world should in general. It's just a, he's, he's brilliant. He's just the best of the best. He's the goat right now. So. Well, in more wacky news, Kylie Jenner upset a lot of people because she took her private plane on a 17-minute flight. Listen, bitches, (laughs) if I had a private plane, I would fucking take that for a joyride. For a 10 minute flight. Oh, let's just go up in the air just for shits and gigs. I don't care. It's my plane. Let's, let's do wheelies and donuts in the sky. I feel yeah. you. It's just jealousy. This is, once again, this is another one of these dumb clickbait stories. Every celebrity, A listers, well, no, they're up in their jets all of the time. I wouldn't say it's dumb because I understand there are some hardcore environmentalists that are bothered by this. But if you have a private plane, yeah. you're not an environmentalist. You know, right. because environmentalists will right. not fi- environmentalists will Here's the fly thing. commercial. Is she claiming to be? No. So yeah. that's, I don't They're have not. an issue with it. Yeah. They're not those kind of peoples. They suck off the teat of the planet and its people. They're parasites. The Kardashians are parasites. Ooh, it's fine. Hey. They are what they are. Hey. In what do you more, hey, it's the truth i wouldn't call them parasites all right you know what a parasite is it's something yes. that sucks okay i would i would, not <laughs> I would call say them that they parasites. are they are they're absolutely capitalists that well i would say are it's willing a, to take i, I think would, most capitalists are parasites how about that i, I think would, most human beings i'll say even environmentalists Everything we do takes away from this planet. We're all parasites. I would say that makes Car- you feel better. I would say the Kardashians have a symbiotic relationship, though. It's not just one way. They may be parasites, but they're also giving people not not everybody, but for many, they're giving people entertainment. So they're not they are giving back to some. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people really like the Kardashians. What a rap. <laughs> In more wacky news, Jared Kushner, the son-in-law of Donald Trump, has a new book coming out. I, I will not be reading that. But something very interesting that got me thinking, and, and it was just like a, a, a talking point for a, a bigger conversation. He revealed that while he was in the White House, he had cancer hmm. and he kept it secret thyroid cancer Mm. and when the white house doctor told him the news he said don't tell my father-in-law donald trump and don't tell my wife either and he didn't specify at at least in this in the uh excerpt the Mm -hmm. uh pre-release press for the book it didn't specify 
how long he waited to tell his wife, Mm -hmm. but he kept that news to his vest, to his chest for a bit before telling his wife. And that just seems odd to me. Like that the question is, if you found out you had cancer, would you not tell your girlfriend right away? I would tell her. Yeah, I think I think it's actually healthy to probably share that with someone to help you get through it, talking it out. It is odd, yeah. um, but it's also a personal preference. If you think that person's got too much going on in the world right now, and it's something that you think you can deal with on your own. But what's interesting is it's odd, but it's not too odd. I, yeah, it's not. Th- meaning like I probably know, like there are some older people, especially who might not even tell their kids they've got cancer. Yeah. But I find that odd. I would want to know. I would be so upset at my mother if she didn't tell me something like that. I'd be, I would be, I would be, ooh, I'd be heated. Hmm. All right. In more wacky news, and then we're going to be wrapping it up soon. Um, Elon Musk, according to the Wall Street Journal. And what's weird is, I think it's weird that there are, but it, and I understand it. Um, it's weird that there's these big media outlets that skew one way or another. The Wall Street Journal is a conservative newspaper, uh, where, whereas, you know, like- The uh, New York Post is not. It's a- No, the New York you know, Post is even more conservative. Right. There are, a, a, you would say a Republican. It was founded by a Republican. Yeah. Well, the Wall Street Journal, I believe, was also founded by Rupert Murdoch, too. Mm. I think I could be wrong. I don't anyway, think so. The journal's been around probably longer than Rupert Murdoch. He may he, have bought it, but he I, might I don't know where it. that I is. I don't it. know. I really don't Any, know. Anyways, the point is, um, they reported, but, but I do consider the Wall Street Journal to be a reputable publication. They reported that Elon Musk had an affair with the wife of uh, Google co-founder Sergey Brin. Hmm. And it happened literally around the same time that his employee had two of his children and his ex-girlfriend Grimes had his second child with him. Wow. So all around that same time, he was also sleeping with his friend's wife. The guy and his wife were separated at the time, but still living together. I don't know if that makes things any better. If you're still living together, I don't know how separated. Look, if you're you are. separated, you're separated. I mean, that's an agreement. That's a legal binding agreement. So you can do whatever you want. So to each his own. But it sounds like he was doing a lot of whatever he wanted. So all right, I'm going to say this because one of the reasons I just even mentioned this story, even the, it's not just because it's wacky, but because I had a wacky idea. Uh-huh. I need to manifest this. Oh God. I have the perfect woman for Elon Musk and the perfect man for this woman. It's going to work like hotcakes. All right. I'm interested. Let's go. Who? Chelsea Handler. Chelsea Handler and Elon. She's such an alpha. She's such got like dude energy and bro and tough. And she needs somebody like Elon Musk. And she's, so crazy that and he needs somebody crazy too and like they're crazy to get it's like a perfect match i totally <laughs> it's not see a it. terrible idea she just broke up with her boyfriend the uh, exactly. comedian so Quay. it makes totally sense it's, it makes total sense to me all right in more <laughs> wacky news before we take calls our last story so i'm letting you get ready for calls mm-hmm. there is this instagram pastor who was making so much money being a, I should maybe be a pastor. There's so much money in God. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. But this Brooklyn based (laughs) Instagram pastor was live streaming. Did you see this story? No, I missed this. It sounds great though. He was live streaming on Sunday in his church and he is like a real flashy pastor. So he wears all this jewelry. And then during the live stream, Three armed men come and rob him of a mill. He had a million dollars worth of jewelry on. (laughs) Mm. I isn't there a passage in the Bible about that? You reap what you sow, or something like. Like I, I don't. You know, whatever you want to. 
donate or give your money to or whatever. But if you're a pastor, I don't think you should be that flashy. Like a million dollars worth of jewelry on you. Like, dude, what? Dude, some of these, these televangelists and the money trail and how much money is in their bullshit game is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Oh God bless God. is what I say. <laughs> All right, let's take some calls. Uh, nut jobs. Hi, guys. This is Michelle calling from New York. I absolutely love your podcast. I'm a, Thank you. I'm a big fan. I've been a fan of yours since the very beginning. So I'm a diehard. Um, I, this is kind of random, but I'm watching The Sopranos right now. And I just saw in season three, episode three, somebody who looks like Perez. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is that Perez? And sure as Sure enough, I Googled it and Perez <laughs> made an appearance in The Sopranos, which is absolutely mind blowing. So, yeah, anyway, I wanted to just call in about that crazy. Can I ask about that? So, you weren't Perez Hilton yet, right? You were just no. an actor going to NYU, right? I had just graduated. It was like literally like a month after graduation. So it was the year 2000. So you were a literal nobody doing that show. You 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 weren't in LA. You weren't nope. out here. You hadn't created PerezHilton.com. Nope. I you was just nobody. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. So what was it like when you got that role? Did you know how big it was or how big the show was? Had it, I, I can't remember back to I, season three. Was it? I, oh, it was huge then. Was it by but, three? Okay. I don't want to be ungrateful. I was, I'm so grateful for that experience, but I never watched the Sopranos. I was a sex <laughs> in the city kind of guy. I watched sex in the city. I didn't watch right. the Sopranos, I mean, but it was still really Sopranos cool. is one of the most iconic no, I know would be in the conversation for the greatest show of all time. Okay. It was still of all really, time. It was still really cool. that I did it, but I, I <laughs> so it didn't really, it. It no, didn't I was really... excited to do it. Of course, like a, a paid acting job. That's what I was dreaming of. <laughs> but if I would have been on sex in the city, it would have been like, Oh my God. I'm gonna be yeah. Fascinating. <laughs> Hi guys. It's Kathy from Colorado. I, I love you both. Oh, thank but you. Booker, I love you so much. Wow. You always keep it real. Thought it was going the you other way. Bring people <laughs> back to earth, and I just love you so much for it. Um, just hearing, I'm a little bit behind because I was on vacation, but the whole Chris Pratt religion BS. If you want to follow that, go ahead and follow it. I don't think you were rude. Um, I am a thousand percent with you. Nobody has talked to God. That book has brought more evil than anything else to this world. Uh, listen, Kathy, you're going to get the, uh, you're going to get the maniacs coming after you. You don't, yeah, you don't I, want I that. I don't want to keep having this conversation. <laughs> you I definitely want, don't want that. I want, listen, I, I'm, I'm definitely not afraid or uh, um, de uh, I don't mind offending people, but I yeah. want to keep growing our fucking podcast. I want to yeah. make more money doing this. <laughs> I want all the religious hey guys, people. Uh, love you both. And um, just calling to comment on the Ricky Martin situation that you guys both spoke about last week. I tend to agree with Booker um, because just because somebody's family doesn't give them a pass to ruin your life. So if it's not true, what is being alleged by this nephew, then yeah, Ricky should go hard on him. And who cares if it's his nephew? He doesn't earn that, deserve that title really of nephew anymore if this isn't true. Um, and yeah, Ricky should just say what he wants to say. And it doesn't matter that it's the nephew. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter to me. That's sort of the point I was trying to make. And that story did come full circle. 800-721-1185. Guys, we need more calls. Don't make them about God because we're tired of it. God yeah. is tired of it. Yeah. And this Monday, Shane Dawson and me, no holds barred, no question off the table. Tune in for that and share this show with all your friends, PerezPodcast.com, PerezPodcast.com. We'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye, guys.